Today's video was selected for you by my gorgeous patrons, so thank you very much to them for making this selection. And if you would like to be involved in future video polls and also have access to the Discord, the one card riff video every month and other privileges as well, check out the tiers. I will leave all the information down below. <laughs> Hello there my darling cherry pies, thank you for joining me again here on my channel. I am very excited today to be giving you some of my personal techniques as a professional tarot reader to help you to get more comfortable with reading a tarot spread. So I'm going to talk through some of the tried and tested techniques that I use in my own professional practice and hopefully some of these ideas can give you much more of a sense of feeling comfortable and confident when you are turning over cards and you're looking at a number of different cards that are obviously working together to create a story and you feel able to actually unravel and tell that story for yourself or for the querent in front of you. So yeah, hopefully this will be helpful. So for the entire time, really, that I've been a card slinger, especially for the time that I've been doing it professionally and also offering professional tarot mentoring, I have been asked the question, how do I read a spread? You know, lots of people will say to me, I understand the individual meanings of cards. I feel comfortable, you know, to one degree or another with each of the 78 cards. But when I turn cards over in a spread formation, I become overwhelmed. I become confused. I don't know how to fit the cards together. It's hard for me to figure out how the cards are speaking together in unison. And, you know, so I really just sort of I feel stumped and I don't know what to do. This video is for anyone who finds themselves in that kind of position. I really want to help you to ease more into reading multiple cards together in a formation. Whenever we lay out a spread, the cards are dancing together. The messages are entangling together and creating a kind of painting of meaning. And we need to be able to be the sort of interpreter of that painting. We have to be able to explain what is going on with the colours and the vibes and the theme and the communications from the painting that the cards are creating. And often when I'm doing a professional tarot spread and I haven't read for somebody before, I will say something like, I turn all the cards over together at the same time and I really read the spread overall first before I get into any specific card meanings, any individual cards. I read the entire spread overall and that is because the spread works a little bit like a painting. And if we look at the entire spread, we can kind of get a sense of the theme and the mood that is coming through. And that theme or mood often sort of leaks into, bleeds into the individual cards. So the first key message I will give you, the first technique is turn all of your cards over together at the same time. If you know that you're someone who struggles when you turn cards over and you're like, what the fuck is going on here? Turn all the cards over at the same time and pace yourself. Let yourself feel into what is coming through. Don't feel that you need to rush to say something, that you need to prove your confidence by speaking immediately. You don't have to. You can say, as you're sort of shuffling your deck, you can say to a querent, if you're reading for a querent, you know, I like to take a moment or two to just, you know, be with the cards. So, so it will take me a, a minute to start speaking you know, you can be the one to set the pace of the reading. You do not have to feel that like, oh my God, I have to turn over cards and I have to immediately know what I'm seeing and I have to start talking straight away. Otherwise, I'm going to look like I don't know what I'm doing. No, not at all. You can explain to your querent that you will be taking some time in quiet contemplation before you start speaking. So that's one thing I will say. Pace and turning everything over together and seeing what you've got. Those are two great ways of just leaning into the spread, first of all. The other thing that I would say, which is a really strong suggestion for those who do find that they struggle to tell the story of the spread, is have you given meaning and purpose to the reading that you are about to give to yourself or someone else? What are you doing the reading for? What is it about? If you don't have that in mind, then yes, it might be harder to see the way that the cards are speaking and fitting together. It doesn't have to be a super specific question. It can be a general theme if you want to, but I would recommend that you at least do have a theme. On my online store, you will see that I do not sell general readings. I very much suggest that everybody that comes to me has a theme or a question in mind. And that is because I feel that the cards do their absolute best work when we know what we are putting them to work for. What do we want to get out of the reading? If we know what we want to get out of it, then we can really get the maximum from it because we know what we're looking for. We know what our aims are. We're not just sort of wandering aimlessly through the cards, not really having anything to direct the messages 
is towards. And we get the best medicine from the cards when we state the problem. If we state what the psycho-spiritual sense of unwellness is, you know, where we are looking for answers, where we feel confused, then the medicine from the cards will really sort of hit harder and faster and be so much more illuminating because we know what it is that we are, we require help with, okay? So for example, a very specific question regarding, let's say, career would be something like, how do I get the promotion that I want to go for at work? That would be a, a very specific work-related question. A more general thing, a more general sort of work-themed reading, the question would be something like, what do I need to know about work right now? You know, something that we, yes, we know that work is the theme, but the question lends a more generalised scope where we're not really sure exactly what we want to know, but we know that work is the issue, work is where we want to put our power. So we kind of go into that with a nice general question, what do I need to know about work? You know? But I think the, the point that I'm getting at is that work is the decided theme. And I often think that when we're struggling to figure out and make sense of a spread, it can be because we've just gone in there completely generally and just been like, I'm just going to throw a few cards and see what happens. And sometimes it can be really difficult to then link the medicine of the cards to a specific problem or intention. So I definitely would recommend that as well. Choose either a specific question or a general theme, but make sure that there is at least something that you are aiming to get out of the cards. Uh, one thing that I will say, my darlings, later on in the video, I am going to go through some dummy spreads to try and demonstrate to you how I actually look at the spread overall and how I fit cards together when I'm reading them. So that is coming. But one thing I want to say, first of all, is pick a good spread. A lot of people that come to me with this concern about not being able to see how the cards are speaking to each other, see how spreads actually are communicating, a lot of them are not using spread positions. Now, I've said in many videos here on my channel that I do not think it's necessarily a good or bad idea to use spread positions or not. It depends on you as the individual reader and what fits best for you. But since this video is geared towards people who are having a bit of a struggle when it comes to knowing how cards fit together, I would strongly suggest to you, because you're having that struggle, that you give every card a job. When you give every card a job, it becomes much easier to really connect with the voice of the spread. So choose a good spread design where you give every single card in the design a distinct position. I have designed a really useful spread that I will go on to demonstrate to you guys a few different times before this video ends so you can get a sense of how I best read the cards when they're interacting with each other. So that will come a little later. But yeah, I definitely would recommend giving cards jobs, okay? Give them positions and that will make it easier to see how they are speaking and how they are interacting with each other. Actually, you know what I'm going to do, darlings? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you the spread that I've designed now. And that is because I want to give you a little bit more advice for how best to set yourself up for a really good reading where you can understand the way the cards are communicating. And I don't think I can do that without showing you a spread design. So I'm going to lay six cards out. OK, and I'm going to tell you what the spread design is so you can get a good idea of what I mean when I talk about how cards interact. All right. So here are the here's a six card reading that's really good for all kinds of questions and all kinds of themes. All right. So the first card is um, current energy of the situation. That's going to be the assessment of what's going on right now in this moment. The second card is strengths and abilities that you can use in the situation. That will be card two. And the third card will be flaws and weaknesses to address in the situation. Then we're going to go on to the second row of the spread. The fourth card is what you can now receive. And the fifth card is what you now should release. The sixth and final card is what lies hidden what lies hidden. So that's having a look at anything that you've not realised yet that you might need to look into. And those uh, receive and release cards are what is available to you that you can now bring in or accept and what needs to go, obviously, kind of self-explanatory. Okay. So those are the six spread positions. If you're interested in this, I will leave the six spread positions down below. I'll leave them in the comment section as a pinned comment, and I'll also leave them in the description section uh, so that you can follow along with me, okay? 
So this is the six card spread. It can be applied, as I said, to loads of different questions and focus areas. It's just a really nice spread design that can apply to relationship stuff, work stuff, spirituality stuff, moments of crisis. It can apply to sort of more general life areas. You know, if you don't really have a specific question, this is a really good spread to use for pretty much anything and everything. When we turn the cards over and we have a look at how the spread is communicating and how the cards are interacting, we're going to keep the spread positions in mind, okay? The spread positions already give the cards a sense of relationship to each other. Even before you know which card comes in which position, the spread positions themselves give a sense of cards that might potentially speak to each other or help each other through kind of underlining the guidance that they're giving. For example, this is a really good example, okay? Um, the current energy of the situation, which is card one, might bear some relevance and interact with the final card, what lies hidden, because the current energy of the situation is something that is being, uh, it's something that's coming to fruition right now, where things are at the moment, what energies are around, but the hidden information could represent things that are going on within the current energy that the querent has not been aware of, that the querent may need to really sort of focus on and zoom in on. So these two cards speak to each other because this is kind of the general vibe of what's going on, but this card speaks to what might be going on that the querent has not realised, is not witnessing yet, is not paying attention to. So it's almost in some ways the shadow of the current relation of the current situation or the thing that is being avoided, the thing that is not being realized or picked up on. So those two cards may already have a strong sense of relationship and we will see what they are when we turn them over for our demonstration readings. Card three, the card about flaws and weaknesses, might have quite a lot of relationship to card five, what to release, because here with card five, we're looking at what do you need to let go of? What isn't working anymore? What is a problem for you? And when we look at that card, it can help us to understand what we need to release in order to make sure that our weaknesses are not causing quite so much of a problem, because often it's something that we need to release, whether that's a mindset or a relationship, you know, a way of thinking, a way of doing things. It's what we we need to release that helps us be better able to deal with our weaknesses and make sure that they don't get out of hand. So those two cards can have a really interesting relationship as well. So this is what I mean. Spread positions actually allow us to see which cards may end up talking to each other and which cards may have quite a lot to say in conjunction with each other. Cards like this in these kinds of positions often become what I call highlighter cards, which basically is just a fancy way of me saying that these cards highlight each other's meanings. They are working together to give the querent more information on a specific area of the theme of the reading. So that's one reason why spread positions can be incredibly useful when we're looking at what the entire spread is saying to the querent. So when you turn the cards of your spread over, my darlings, you're going to be looking for a few different things things. And like I said, remember, pacing is everything. You do not have to immediately see these patterns and recognize these things. You can sit for a while and just absorb, just lean into what it is you're seeing. Okay. You don't have to come out immediately and start giving your interpretations. You can give it some time, give it some forethought. Okay. But when you turn the cards over for your spread, you're going to be looking for a few different things that allow you to tell the story of the spread. One of the things you're going to be looking for is elements. Which element of the five in tarot is ruling in your spread? In other words, is there a lot of water? Is there a lot of fire? Is the spread ruled by the major arcana, meaning the majority of the cards in the spread are from the major arcana? Have a look at that. The other thing you're going to be looking for is which elements are missing because sometimes that gives good information as well. You're going to be looking at numbers. You're going to be looking at numerical patterns. Are there a lot of threes? Is there a ladder of numbers? Is there a one, two, and three, you know, or a four, five, and six? We're going to have a look at that. You're going to have a look at the general vibe, and that includes what is going on pictorially. Just having a look at the pictures in the cards and just having that instinct that like, oh, wow, this is a really action-packed spread, or this is a spread with a lot of different fight scenes in it and a lot of tension and conflict. This is a spread that looks, you know, really red and really pink, and that's giving me a certain feeling. You're allowed to go off the beaten track a little bit and just think about how the spread feels to you as a reader. Don't forget, tarot is an art. 
art, you know? It's much more an art than it is a science. You have to really go into it with your heart open and your sense of imagination very wide and broad and brought to the party. So when you turn the cards over, also think about what is the vibe, you know? And again, like I said, we're going to be looking at cards that reference or highlight each other, cards that seem to have the same sort of meaning. They seem to be saying the same kind of thing. You know, for example, there are certain cards in tarot that represent leaving, going, walking away, right? So three of wands would be such a card. Six of swords is that kind of card. Eight of cups is a leaving card. The fool could even be seen as a card about leaving and going on a quest, going on a journey. So let's say we have all four of those cards present in a spread. Immediately we see when we look at those cards, oh wow, there is a theme here of a journey, a quest, a beginning, a leaving that's happening, a sense of a new adventure, right? So when we see those cards, we kind of look and see, oh, there's a theme. Um, let's think about cards to do with connection. If you get three of cups, six of cups, four of wands, you know, cards like that, and they're all present, we can see that like, oh, wow, there seems to be quite a theme of connection here. This reading is really saying something about that theme in relation to whatever our question was. So you can bring that up. You can say, okay, right off the bat, I'm seeing that there is a theme about the need for connection or shadows to do with connection. Let's go into it. Let's look at it. So you can really see anyway, just from the cards that come up or from the pictures in those cards, what kinds of themes are coming to you from this entire spread. So what we're going to do now, now that I've given that advice, is we're going to turn over the cards three separate times and I'm going to give you a sense of what I would do at the beginning of any querent reading where I just have a look at the complete spread and I have a look, how is the spread talking to me? How are we fixed for this reading? Is there a specific kind of energy? Is there a strong elemental ruling? And what does that mean for the querent? I'm going to give you three examples and I really hope this will help you to see how all of these techniques I've just suggested really can fit together for you as a reader. So let's go for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn over these six cards, looking at the spread positions again of the current energy, the strengths and abilities, flaws and weaknesses, what to receive, what to release, and what lies hidden. Oh, do you know what? I started turning them over, my darlings, and I forgot to give us a dummy question. <laughs> I've got my dummy spread right here, but I've got no dummy question. Okay, so the question we're going to go with, the question that we th I think we'll look at, is... Um, why are things going wrong in my relationship right now? What is happening, right? So let's imagine that either you or your querent has come to the cards with this question, what is going wrong in my relationship at the moment, okay? And so we're going to turn the cards over. So page of wands is the current state of the situation. The strengths and abilities to use, that one is going to be knight of wands. Interesting, the page and the knight of wands are both present, so we're paying attention to that straight away. Two fire court cards are present. Then we're going to have a look at the flaws and weaknesses to address. That's queen of pentacles, okay? So another thing we're looking at is there are three courts on the top row. That's what I call, fancily enough, a canopy of court energy. That's just a fancy way of saying everything on that top row is from the court and I'm interested in that, okay? So already, as we're turning the cards over, we're getting this sense, what is going on here? This is interesting. Now let's have a look at what to receive. The card there is King of Wands, fascinating. We have another court card. So already I'm getting buzzing. As a reader, this is the kind of thing that excites me. What to release, let's have a look there. No shitting way. Queen of Swords, that's mad. Are we going for a full house? Um, what lies hidden? Five of Wands. Okay, we finally have something that's not a court. So this is big time court energy. So that's the very first thing I would say. If a querent came to me and the question was, what's going wrong in my relationship? How can I make change in the relationship? It's not feeling good. What's happening? I would straight away say to the querent, well, there's a lot of court energy here. You know, you've got um, two queens. You've got um, a king, a knight and a page. This is big. So first thing I would say to my querent is, wow, there's a shitload of core energy, babe, you know? And what do I feel like that means? As a reader, I would say that courts are all about sovereignty. They're about independence. They're about figuring out who you are. They're about really tuning into how you want to be and how you want to be perceived. And they're really about developing your sense of personality. And they're about strengthening and broadening your sense of who you are as a human being. When I see a spread that is this dominated by core energy, I'm thinking, 
thinking this is a querent that's probably at a point in their life where they really want to strike out, they want to know themselves, they want to figure out who the fuck they are, and there's a lot going on in terms of identity and in terms of questioning and developing the identity. So that's the first thing that I would say. I would say that this probably represents, depending on the querent and what I know about them, what they've told me, I would say this probably represents that you really are trying to forge forward with the relationship with yourself and your relationship with your partner needs to be able to allow you the space to connect with you as well and have your personal sovereign journey. So if you're feeling suffocated in any way, if you're feeling unable to explore all these facets of yourself and figure out who you are and what you want, if the relationship is stifling you in that way, that is going to be a problem. And it could be that your partner is also in a similar situation, although I wouldn't personally dwell on that because I'm rather a person-centered reader. So I like to focus on the querent in front of me, not on the absent partner. So that's the first thing I would say. The next thing I notice right off the bat is that there is a strong energy of fire here, guys. We've got page of wands, knight of wands, king of wands, and five of wands. So four of the six cards are from the fire suit. I'm mentioning that next of all. That's the next thing I'm mentioning, right? So I'm going to be saying to the querent, wow, there's a lot of fire here. And fire is the element of passion. And it's the element of insistence and manifestation. It is a highly potent energy in relationships, but it can also be destructive. It can represent a lack of ability to compromise. It can represent a very, very strong desire to forge forward with your vision. And of course, in relationships, compromise is of the essence. We cannot always be in our full fire energy because fire is insistence on our personal vision and manifesting what we want. And that can cause a hectic energy in relationships relationships because we are not being focused enough on compromise and on seeing our partner's point of view. So I would focus on that as well. And I would say that to the querent too. There's a lot of fire, which means mad passion, but also sometimes we are willing to burn things down to get our own way. And we cannot have that in relationships. The fire has got to be tempered in relationships sometimes so that we can compromise and negotiate with each other and develop a shared vision instead of just being very despotic and tyrannical about our own own vision, okay? So these things would come in. Those are the first two things I would say that I would find really, really interesting. As you turn over the cards in any kind of spread that has positions, you're going to notice some key things, okay? Because you're gonna have the positions in mind when you turn the cards over. When I turned these cards over, the first thing I noticed was that the current energy of the situation is page of wands, which is a restlessness, a desire for adventure, a desire to move in one way or the other. There's, there's no desire to stay put. There's a desire to move. So the desire for change is there, but there may also be kind of a roving eye, you know, looking at what might be better, feeling dissatisfied in the current situation. And I noticed that the flaws and weaknesses card is Queen of Pentacles, which is in many ways the polar opposite of Page of Wands. Queen of Pentacles is satisfaction with remaining where you are, staying put and building on the earth below you. So Queen of Pentacles is more stable, more slow moving, more satisfied with the status quo and desirous to build on what is already there. So it's interesting because current energy of the situation is very likely that my querent is feeling like they want to move. They're restless. They're fed up. They want something different. They're, they're really noticing where they want change. And they might be feeling like an escape is the necessary way out or the thing that would work. But the weaker point that needs to be worked on is exactly that. It's exactly that feeling of like, if this isn't working, I'll just go somewhere else. You know, I'm not going to put the effort in. And so with Queen of Pentacles being the weakness, it is that sense that maybe the querent does not like to follow through or hasn't previously followed through. There isn't perhaps the bigger sense of commitment and dedication required to really, really develop the earth of this relationship. There's too much of a frustration. There's too much of a desire for quick change, immediate solutions. Queen of Pentacles being the weakness implies a querent who might be, let's say, not as good at focusing on slow moving, slow, slow moving, consistent, long term change. They're more restless. They want things now, now, now. Right. 
Um, and that's where Knight of Wands comes in as the strength because Knight of Wands as a strength or an ability shows that the querent does have the ability to bring in a passionate new vision for this relationship and make it work and be dedicated to it. But they've got to work on this floor, which is, you know, the floor essentially around the virtue of patience. Patience may not be a virtue for this querent. They may want things really immediately. Fire is a very immediate element. Uh, Earth is much more of a slow growing patient element. So that's really interesting. And I would mention that when it comes to what the general theme is for the reading. Um, and let's just go ahead and, and I'll do the bottom row as well, just in case you are kind of wondering uh, what to receive. King of Wands. This is really interesting because it's saying that the Querent has a lot of fire in their perspective right now. Fire is their strength and fire is their current view of things, the current energy, what is going on. So this all comes together in what to receive. Um, here I would give the querent a lot of encouragement to use their fire, you know, but to harness it and to master it. Rather than feeling like I want change, I want to manifest my vision, what's going on, what's happening, I want to know now, now, now. I would say you've got to be the master of your fire. You've got to know that you are someone who can birth a bold new vision for the relationship and you can bring it in, but it's going to take dedication. You've got to be in charge of that fiery desire for change rather than letting it eat you up, uh, letting it make you very impatient or very impetuous, impetuous rather. <laughs> Um, then you look at what to release, Queen of Swords. Here I think this is interesting because there's so much to do with overthinking and I think over visualizing because Knight of Wands is the strength card, right? And that's got a lot to do with like manifesting your vision, thinking about what you want, taking aim and putting in the momentum to make it happen. Queen of Swords as what to release is interesting because it implies that my querent might be overthinking and over feeling. And it's time to just really get back to relaxing, looking at the present moment and really bringing it down to just what's going on in that moment or what's going on over the course of that day in the relationship, rather than planning and strategizing and worrying and thinking about things long into the future. Remember, a shadow of Queen of Swords is over fucking thinking it. You're over stewing everything in your head and getting really, you know, long term, what is going to happen? And oh my God, what if this happens? It's a misuse of the imagination. Knight of Wands is the strength card for my querent. So straight away, I'm thinking this querent's got a lot of imagination, a lot of vision. You know, they are inventive. They are creative as a person. And when it comes here with what to release, I'm thinking, ah, you know what? My querent is taking all of that imagination and that vision of what could be, and they're stewing in it. That's why this is the release card, because they're overthinking, they're over visualizing, they're overdoing it, and they're wondering what's coming down the road, you know, and they're painting pictures of that in their mind, rather than just focusing on the next right action, that queen of pentacles stabilizing energy. What action can I take today to bring the relationship to a sense of remedy? So we don't want the querent to be going into long-term planning and stewing and worrying and overthinking and over-visualizing and over-dramatizing. So those two cards have a really important relationship with each other because here the querent is being told, you're imaginative, you're passionate, you have vision, you know how you feel things could be. But the Queen of Swords is saying, that's working against you right now. How can we bring that back in to uh, a sense of strength rather than a sense of weakness? And what lies unhidden is Five of Wands, that conflict card. And that's interesting because it's implying that perhaps there does need to be more communication with the, uh, with, the, with the partner. Because I think Five of Wands represents tension. It represents areas of conflict. It represents a mismatch in the way people are thinking about things and maybe even a sense of competitive energy in a relationship, the desire to win rather than to understand each other. So here I would be advising the querent, you know, is there any way? that you and your partner can actually generate more of a sense of communication without shouting over each other, without competing, but really listening to each other. And it would be at that point that I would take the opportunity to remind my querent that you can only do that from your side of things. If you're open to clear communication without argument and you're willing to hear what your partner has to say, then it's up to them to be open to that as well. If they're not open to that from their side, there's nothing you can do about that. You can only be open to it from your side. 
At the end of this example spread, I would say to my querent, again, I would bring them back to the fact that there's so much fucking core energy here. That really interests me. As a reader, that's really what I'm into, the fact that there's so many courts. So I would bring that back right at the end of the reading to saying to my querent, let's not forget about the incredible presence of core energy that's going on here. You cannot afford to be restricted from your personal, spiritual, social, creative, etc. goals. There is a lot of this essence in the court that you need to feel you have your own life and you are in love with yourself. You're on a journey with you. If you feel that the relationship has been stifling that, or indeed that you may be stifling that in your partner, that's going to be one of the main issues that's causing a problem. So make sure that you feel that you're on a personal journey, you have a sense of what your goals are, and your partner is not holding you up and is not trying to make problems for you in that area. So that's kind of how I would interpret that spread. So you can see right from the beginning, I was looking, what is coming up? What elements am I seeing repeated? Am I seeing, in this case, a shitload of core energy? What does that mean? And how are certain cards speaking to each other as I'm turning them over? So I'm already developing the sense of story immediately as I'm turning the cards over and I'm getting excited about what for me is significant as a reader. Let's go for example two, let's lay out six more cards and see what's going on there. And I'll give you even more of a sense of how we develop story. By the way, darlings, the deck I'm using for this uh, video is Dreaming Way. I absolutely adore this deck and I've loved it for the longest time. I use it regularly for my own querence and for myself. So I've also used it on this channel before to give instruction. You will see it featured in my video about the court card breakdown, the breakdown of the court card personalities that I did not long ago. So I'll leave a link down below. If you haven't seen that video and you're enjoying this one, I would strongly suggest that the court card video could be for you. Okay, let's just go with another six cards. And this time I'm going to choose a different example question. Okay, so the example question for this um, reading is going to be, how do I become a stronger witch? And why is my witchcraft not currently cooking like I want it to be? So we're imagining here that the querent is a witch, and they're feeling like their practice is not going the, the way that they want at the minute. They're feeling like there's issues, their magic isn't working, they're feeling like they've lost their magical mojo, and they would like to know, like, what's going on with me? How can I be a stronger witchcraft practitioner? That's the question that we're going to go with. So let's see what comes through here. Okay, current energy of the situation, death, very interesting right off the bat. I'm already intrigued. I'm already tantalized. Strengths and abilities to use. Six of swords. Now, already those two have a relationship. Yes, they're speaking to each other. Can you guess how that might be? Um, now, let's have a look at the flaws and weaknesses to address. The devil. Those three cards all have a relationship with each other, my loves. Try and think about why that might be as we go through the rest of the cards. What to receive. Two of pentacles interesting, what to release, ace of pentacles, fascinating, and what lies hidden, five of cups, that is so interesting, I feel as a reader that all of these cards have a relationship, so let's have a little tot up of what is going on in terms of elements, so we have two cards from the suit of pentacles here, and we have two cards from the major arcana, the spirit suit and the earth suit are ruling, that's very interesting. We have one card from the suit of swords and one card from the suit of cups. So a little bit of air and a little bit of water. There is no fire. Fire is completely emitted. There is nothing from the suit of wands. So I might start by saying you have a reading that's ruled by earth and spirit. The earth here, the spirit there. Um, and what that usually would represent is that you are ready to do something different. You're ready to lock your practice down in some way. But there's also a shift going on. Spirit ruled readings can often be representative of a time where there is a necessary internal shift or transformation. I tend to find that major arcana cards represent a time of big significance, and that usually means big change or big realization. The earth cards are both in the foundation of the spread. In other words, they're on the bottom row. And I think what that means is that the witch is going through change and they're ready to bring that change down into manifestation. They're ready to develop something with that sense of change. 
This can be reassuring for a witch because it can show the witch that like, oh, there is something going on. There is some reason why my witchcraft feels a little bit like out of sorts and a little bit meh at the moment. And it's because there's definitely a shift coming. I'm supposed to be looking at my practice in a different way. Illumination is shortly to come to me. It's in the post, in other words. The lack of fire, I am going to say that that is the lack of the witch's desire to take risk. So what I've noticed as I've uh, drew, drawn these cards, my darlings, is that there is a need for change that's represented by these two cards, but there is a fear of change. There is a fear of trying new things. And there is also an indecisiveness going on within the witch. And so there is really that sense that like the witch is putting a lot of pressure on themselves to make sure that they choose correctly and that they do exactly what is the right thing to do. But they're very fearful of taking any risk or making any change. And so it seems like they're stuck in the same position with their craft, even though it's totally time for them to move on to a new phase of their craft. So the fact that there is no fire there, I feel like that is a lack of desire to take risk. It is a fear of creating change. It's a fear of visualizing the brand new bold path. And the brand new bold path is asking to come into being for this witch. It needs to happen. It's time for a shift. It's time to embrace the new. The lack of fire shows a little bit of fear in the witch of letting that happen. Fire is the element of both creation and destruction. And that is the way I have really connected with the suit of wands for the longest time. So the fact that there are no wands in this spread tells me that the witch might be fearful of creating something new and fearful of destroying what has been the path for that witch for a long time. In other words, they're fearful of like moving and shaking, you know, experimenting. Uh, they're fearful of getting things wrong. They're fearful of taking the risk of getting things wrong or trying something that isn't going to work out. And yet their current iteration of their craft doesn't have that spark anymore. The fire's gone. They need to move in a different direction in order to bring that fire back in. So that's what I'm getting from those elements being present and from the element that is not present. So let's have a quick look at this, okay? Why did I say all of these cards have a relationship? It's quite simple, because the current situation being death, I read that as the need for transformation. The witch has already shed their skin. And this card in the reading is saying, you've changed, bitch. <laughs> you are ready. You're on some new shit and you don't even realise it yet. You have grown. You have changed shape in your witchcraft. So the death card is there. The strengths and abilities is six of swords. That is really spirit coming in and saying to the witch, you are ready for this. Your strength right now is to try something different, to go somewhere new. You do have that ability to think differently. You do have the ability to take an adventure. You're strong enough to do something different in your craft and something new is calling you. So I think Six of Swords also might say your strength is in knowing what comes next. Don't tell yourself that you don't know or that you, you can't guess or that you'll get it wrong. You are a brave pioneer. You are ready to be an adventurer in your craft. You do not have to stay put where you were before. In fact, the current situation is saying that you need to move. Something new is out there for you in the craft. It's time to bring in some new techniques. It's try time to shake up the way you think about magic and ritual, etc. Why is the devil coming up for the flaws and weaknesses? The devil can often represent being stuck. It can often represent fear. It can often represent being tied to patterns, cycles, routines, and habits that are no longer good for us. Maybe they were never good for us, but we feel compelled to stay there and remain there. We've got our mind in some kind of chains, right? So I think the devil is the shadow of these two cards. The witch is being told, you're ready, you've changed shape, you've evolved, you are strong enough to go ahead and forge something different. And the devil, as the flaws card is saying, you're scared, you don't think you can do that, but you really can. The devil, as the flaws and weaknesses to address, is looking at what is it within that witch that is telling them that they can't make these big changes, that they can't let go of what's not working anymore, that they're not allowed to take control of their craft for themselves.
Let's have a look on the bottom row. It's really interesting because we've got what to receive and what to release, and they are both cards from the Earth suit. So we're really looking here at being able to receive and release certain things that will give the witch access to their craft in manifestation. If they focus on what to receive and what to release, as laid out by these two cards, they will be able to make something happen. Now, what I'm noticing is that there is a numerical ladder here, the ace and the two in the same suit. What does that mean to see both the one and the two come up? It means that Earth could be a massive area of development for this particular witch. So we're really looking at like what they can achieve, you know, what they want to bring forth in their witchcraft, what their aims are in the material reality. So what their aims are to do with home, the body, career and money. There's a massive ability for the witch to really get moving and shaking in that area and make things happen. So at this point, I would say that to the witch. I'd be like, oh, interesting. There's a numerical earth ladder here. We're going up in number in the earth department. So these two cards are probably really important. What are they saying? Well, what to receive is two of pentacles and two of pentacles is you've got to receive your confidence and ability to make some decisions. You can't have everything in your craft. You're not going to be able to do everything at the same time. You've got to get more decisive. Receive the power to be decisive and know that you are allowed to do that. And nothing too terrible is going to go wrong if you choose and it wasn't quite right. And then you want to choose differently. And what needs to be released Ace of Pentacles, I think that's pressure. Ace of Pentacles is the beginning of the brand new part of the path. And to me, that looks like pressure, that the witch is putting themselves under quite a lot of pressure to make sure that they choose wisely, that they do things correctly, that they choose the right road first time. And that's not always possible when we're trying to figure out a new way of addressing our witchcraft. So I would definitely say, like, drop the pressure, release the pressure to get things right first time. It's important to be experimental. It's important to play rather than to tell yourself, you know what, if I make changes, if I try new things, it better be right first time because maybe it won't be. Ace of Pentacles is the planting of the seed of manifestation, and there can be a lot of pressure and a lot of fear in that. And I, so I think these two cards are coming together to say, shit will get off the pot, baby, just make some choices. You know, nothing's going to go that badly wrong. What will be wrong is if you are stuck in the same mud and you do not let yourself make a move. And Five of Cups is so interesting as what lies hidden because Five of Cups is also about being stuck and it's also about staying in the same place, not taking advantage of the new opportunities. But unlike the other cards that have suggested that, this card is suggesting that this is a really deeply emotional thing. And so when I look at this card, I think, oh, now I'm seeing that the witch actually has some deeper emotional reasons why their witchcraft is remaining in the same stagnant shape and they've kind of lost their passion for it. And so this might be a really good time for me to say to the Quirin, you know, your hidden elements card is five of cups. That shows that you've been through some shit and it's that emotional shit that you've been dealing with, that you've been healing or even avoiding healing that is preventing you from moving forward in your witchcraft. Those things are linked, you know? So what's going on in your witchcraft is not going on in a vacuum. There's been some difficulty emotionally and that difficult emotional content has made you feel fearful perhaps of doing things in your craft that won't ultimately help you or that might be wrong, you know? So I would definitely say that one of the most important things perhaps for this witch to do is to figure out some healing ritual or some lovely medicinal witchy stuff that will help them to move through what else is going on. Because I think this is not so much about the witchcraft journey. This is about other areas of life. That's what it seems to me. So the hidden element here for this practitioner is, you know, your lack of interest or your lack of vision for moving forward in your craft, your feeling that the craft has become stagnant is linked to emotional pain in other areas of life. And maybe it feels just too high risk to forge forward daringly in your witchcraft when so much feels like it's gone wrong emotionally in other areas. You've been hurt, you've been in pain. There's some maybe unresolved emotional content, which is making you feel very fearful of fucking around with your craft too much. But actually, 
that deep emotional content may have been exactly the thing that has led to this, the need for the witch to move forward, the need to represent that they have changed, they have shed their skin, they are ready for the next phase of their craft. Okay, my darlings, let's go ahead with one more example reading. I'm gonna lay out six cards using that same example spread design that I've given, which is really good for pretty much any question you could ask the cards. And what should the example question be this time around? I'm gonna go for, um, let's have a look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a querent, an imaginary querent, who is asking the question, how can I deal with this shitty colleague I have at work? We don't like each other. Uh, they're very competitive with me. They never seem to like me from the get-go and they're making my work environment horrible. How do I deal with that? You know, what should I do moving forward, essentially? Okay, let's go ahead and look at the six cards. Current energy of the situation, ace of swords, strengths and abilities to use, six of pentacles, so interesting. <laughs> Already I'm getting an idea what's going on here. Flaws and weaknesses to address, four of pentacles. Again, very interesting. So already now we've got the earth ruling for the moment. What to receive, nine of cups. What to release, nine of swords. We've got two nines, that's interesting. And finally, what lies hidden, page of cups. Okay, so one thing I noticed right off the bat is that we have a trio of elements of elements here. And so we actually have a triad ruling is what I call it. So let's have a look what I mean by that. We have two cards from the suit of swords here, the nine of swords and the ace of swords. We have two cards from the suit of pentacles, the six of pentacles and the four of pentacles. And we then have two cards from the suit of cups, both the nine and the page. So we have an equal ruling of a trio of elements here. We have a, a, an air ruling, an earth ruling and a water ruling. All three elements are on show. What does this mean? Well, I mean, I would say first off, the air ruling is about bringing a different mindset to this situation, you know, thinking about what can be done in terms of how you switch up the mindset and how you play the game actually a little bit more tactically with this shitty colleague from work. So that's what I'm interested in there. And it's also about protecting your mental well-being. Air is all about the mind. It's about the way you think about things and it's about your mental agility, tactics, strategy and philosophy. So I'm really thinking about mental wellness, but also about really winning mental strategy for dealing with this shitty colleague connection at work. The earth area of things is really interesting because earth is about how you want to forge forward with your ambition and how you want to make things happen. So there's a determination there, um, yes, to definitely win out against this colleague's bad behavior, but also to protect your own performance at work and make sure that you're doing what you need to do to make your work efforts land rather than being too kind of caught up in this drama. The water is really interesting. I would call these pillars of water because the cups are in the bottom right and the bottom left. And that usually looks to me like these are the two sort of foundation pillars, the things that strengthen the querent. So I would definitely say emotional intelligence is a big thing that strengthens the querent. They have a de high degree of emotional intelligence, this querent. And so they probably can understand some of the underlying reasons for what is going on between themselves and this colleague. They're no dumb onion, this querent. They've got that water in both foundational pillars. So I would be saying to the querent, like, one thing that you can use to get yourself through these difficult interactions is your emotional intelligence. It might even be likely that, that you possess more of it than this colleague, and you can use that to your strategic advantage, right? But there's also a suggestion with these pillars that whatever is going on between my querent and this colleague is affecting them emotionally. And so they're going to have to protect and boundary their emotions because yes, they have a high degree of emotional intelligence, but could it be the case that they also have a high degree of emotional sensitivity? And that is really causing them to be more emotionally invested in what's going on with this colleague. Um, so more than they need to be, let's say. So those are the things I'm thinking of there. I also want to mention, my darlings, that there are two nines here, nine of cups and nine of swords. That's interesting to me just because nines often represent a challenge. They represent some kind of like final push before the result can be reached. They can represent burden, but they can also represent a big push of momentum in order to receive the result, which is culminated in the 10. 
So two nines is interesting. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, oh, I also want to mention to the querent that it could be that there are going to be smoother sailing days ahead. At the moment, it might be that they're really in this situation where things feel very fractious, very tumultuous, very much a lot of challenges arising. But that is going to be moved through. Nines often represent that calm before the, sorry, that calm before the storm, that storm before the calm, I guess you could say. They represent like the dark part before dawn. That's how best I'll put it, okay? So I'm looking at the nines. I might make mention to the querent of that. So that's something that intrigues me. I'm not really so worried about the omitted elements. Yes, there are a couple of elements omitted. And I might also mention when I'm talking about nines being like a challenging time before the calm time comes, I might also mention in the same breath that there are no major arcana cards in this reading. And that usually also represents a time of waiting and a time of frustration before the actual big realization or big change comes. So I might mention that as well. When I'm reading for a querent that has no majors in their spread, usually I'm thinking, oh, okay, so this is kind of a liminal space. This is a time of waiting for the big transition or the big realization. And the period of waiting is not a mistake. Sometimes we are supposed to wait for more information before we can act. So I would mention that to the querent and I would say, interestingly, yeah, you've got two nines, which represent that this is a time of challenge before the time of realisation or resolution. And on top of that, there are no majors in your reading. And that kind of explains to me that you are in a holding pattern right now. So although it's frustrating, it does seem to be that that's what's supposed to happen before you reach the eventual realisation or the big insight, so to speak. One of the main themes that I'm seeing coming through in this particular reading is strategy, tactics, and that involves energy management and also playing a bit of a game, you know, beating the colleague at their own game. I'm seeing a lot of ability to be able to do that, but I'm also seeing a risk of that as well. We need to make sure that this querent is not worrying so much about what's going on with their colleague at work that it's sort of bleeding into the rest of their life. Um, and I, I want to explain a little bit how I'm seeing that coming up as a theme. But one thing I'll say is I would probably mention that to the querent. I'd be like, look, there's a lot here that suggests that you would be really good at devising a strategy to deal with this colleague that's making your work life a misery. But you've also got to make sure it doesn't get to you too much, you know, because there's obviously some emotional content there that is making you struggle. So let's have a look, okay? Current energy of the situation is Ace of Swords, and I think this bears relevance to the strengths and abilities. So let me explain. Ace of Swords, I would look at that as the current situation card and say to the querent, you know, Ace of Swords is all about the new idea, the fresh mindset, the new way of looking at things. And you are totally ready right now to embody a new way. You realise that the way you've been trying to deal with this colleague has not been working as well as you want. You're ready to try other things. You are determined to find something that is going to work if you have to continue to work with this colleague. And what I'm getting from Ace of Swords is that you are ready to start to make this work for you. Ace of Swords can be about using your intelligence to receive a new result. You're going to put the sharp sword of your mind into the mix and use the sharp sword of your mind to get the result that you desire. That really, really feeds into Six of Pentacles as the strength and ability because Six of Pentacles is the card of give and take and really negotiating for a good outcome. And I think what this represents is that the querent could be quite clever at playing tactically. They could give the colleague a little bit of what they want, right? In other words, read the colleague, read what the colleague wants, read the personality of the colleague and sort of cleverly give to the colleague a little bit of what they want to ensure that they're not being so heinous, right? So it's playing the game tactically. Six of Pentacles can be very tactical, it's also about making sure you don't give the colleague too much of your energy. You want to make sure that you're thriving in the workplace and doing what you need to be doing. So you've got to play the colleague tactically, but you've got to make sure you're giving the lion's share of your attention to your own work performance and not allowing them to win by default because you're so obsessed with what they're doing that you're forgetting to do your work well. So this is all about strategy. This is all about tactics. How are you going to play it so that you've got the upper hand? And that really feeds into a of swords, that representation that the energy right now is that the querent can get the upper hand if they want it. If they're willing and prepared to do what it takes to play tactically with this colleague, then they can win. 
So that's a really, really interesting relationship between those two cards. But the Querent has really got to make sure that they're willing to make some changes. And that can be difficult. Four of Pentacles is the weaknesses to address. And Four of Pentacles can often be about being stuck in our way of doing things, you know, really pulling closely to ourselves, our specific routines and our specific ways of getting things done. And so the cards are really challenging the Querent here. You've got to be prepared to make some tactical changes and not hold on so much to the way you feel like like you want things done. You've got to think about who is this colleague? How can I best make sure that I can thrive in the workplace with this colleague around? What do I need to change? And there will be some discomfort around making those changes because four of pentacles as the weaknesses card represents that this is a querent that really wants to keep doing things their way and they just want the colleague to make the changes. They don't really want to make the changes to the way they're doing things at work or the way they're interacting with the colleague. They just want the changes to magically happen. And so this is kind of a tough love card, right? Because it's saying, you know, like you have to make sure that you make some sensible, practical changes so you can see the results play out. If you're just sitting around waiting for this colleague to change, that's highly unlikely to happen. It's got to be something that you change. So stop being so stubborn. The weakness here is stubbornness. And I think that's really interesting. The two nines have a relationship because they're both about well-being. OK, they're both about really receiving emotional support and releasing mental anguish. So let's have a look what to receive. Nine of cups. This can be a representation of emotional support. It can represent, yes, your own emotional intelligence, bringing that to the equation, but also reaching out for advice from others or support from others in your network. One thing I would say with this card coming up is that the Querent has already received some emotional support by coming for a tarot reading. They have witnessed that they need outside help and they've actually come for a reading. So they've already put into advice the Nine of Cups uh, guidance as the receive card because this is about, you know, receiving help, receiving receiving guidance, you know, receiving outside support. And they're doing that by getting a reading. So what I would encourage is that they carry on with that, you know, reach out to friends, um, reach out to other colleagues that are supportive that you can trust. Um, really sort of understand, read any books that inspire you, you know, make sure you're doing the best with your spare time to make sure that you're emotionally supported and you are enriched and fed in some way, you know, so it's really about reaching out. And I think reaching out to the gods as well, reaching out to the guides, reaching out for magic, reaching out to the ancestral energies you work with, all of that stuff, just making sure that you're not grappling with this alone will be really important. And the release card is nine of swords. This is really about releasing any mental anguish that's coming up. When the workday ends, stop thinking about it quite as much unless you're doing something to enrich and nurture yourself around it. Do not torment yourself. Stop overthinking. Stop coming up with different scenarios and different fantasy things that could happen. Things you want to say to this, to this colleague, things you hope will happen to them. All of that is taking energy away from your performance at work that you want to put into it and the rest of your life, the things you want to fucking enjoy, you know? So Nine of Swords is an interesting one as the release card. It's saying, release that mental anguish. Don't do yourself up a fucking wrong un by literally lying there in bed at night, stewing over this, uh, losing sleep over it, obsessing over it, fixating on it and letting it harm you mentally. So those two cards, those two nines are all about making sure that this time of challenge that's come along before the before the you know the result in the end this time of challenge might be doing a number on the querent's well-being so make sure you're reaching out for support and make sure you're not using your mind to fixate and stew the final card is what lies hidden page of cups now this is an interesting one this is the page of relationship in uh, relationship intimacy community bonding I would say that one of the things with Page of Cups that's coming up as the hidden element um, is it's an intriguing one. But what I will say is I think Page of Cups as the hidden element represents that the querent might possibly really have liked that colleague initially or still like certain things about that colleague now. They might be sorely disappointed that the colleague is being mean to them because when they first uh, encountered that colleague, they really hoped the two of them could be friends or at least really good workmates. And so it's caused a lot of disappointment. 
And I think what Page of Cups might represent is that the querent could have put a lot into the initial relationship, work relationship with this colleague. And so they feel sincerely let down and they've taken it really rather fucking personally that this colleague has ended up being someone that they consider an adversary. So there's a disappointment there. And there's really a feeling that if only the querent and this colleague could get into right relationship with each other, they could really succeed and they could really collaborate. But it is really important that with Page of Cups energy, the querent does not keep on giving to the colleague in the hope that they're going to come around or they're going to change. You know, it's almost like you've tried what you could try to make the colleague understand that you're not against them and that you would like to work with them. Now it might be time to pull back on that energy and just let things play out. But yeah, there does seem to be a sense of hurt here. The hurt is deeper than maybe just the work situation. It could be that the querent is reminded of something when it comes to this issue. Page of Cups is about the desire to connect, to collaborate, to be close, to be respectful. And I think what it represents, this kind of hidden aspect, is that the querent is upset genuinely that this colleague is not being nice to them or getting on with them. And maybe it's reminding them of previous um, situations of rejection or bullying or not being accepted. And so it's really doing a number on them in that deeper way. And it's really about healing some of that content as well, because it seems like this issue is not just about my querent and the colleague that's being horrible to them. It's something deeper. It's about that deeper feeling of trying to connect with someone, um, give out the olive branch to them, get along with them and finding that they're being horrible in return. So it could be that there is something, some button that's being pushed inside my querent. Um, what does this colleague represent? What is this nasty colleague symbolic of? And is there any healing that needs to be done there? Interestingly, there is some correlation then with Five of Cups appearing in the last spread. Page of Cups here is saying a similar thing. This is not just about the immediate situation you're having a reading on. There's something deeper going on there. This reminds you of some old content and you're being asked to kind of address that, work with it and heal it. So hopefully these three examples have given you a sense of how you can actually look at the cards um, in relationship to each other, my darlings, and see what could be there, you know. Um, have a play with it. Have a play with this specific spread design, any others that you feel are really useful. Give yourself some example spreads, make up some querents and just like invent questions that they would ask and go through and try it. Again, remember, pace yourself. You don't have to see the patterns and relationships straight away. It's easy for me because I've been doing this every fucking day near enough for like 10 years as a professional, right? So it's easier for me. I can really lean into it quickly. But when I'm doing a spread with more cards, for example, I have a 12 card reading in my online store. When I'm doing a reading with 12 cards, I do sit for a minute in silence. I do say to the querent, I'm gonna need a minute because it's 12 cards. So just give me a sec to get my bearings. I have absolutely no qualms telling a querent that it's fine. You know, I want sometimes a little bit of quiet time before I start really like speaking about what is coming through. So don't be afraid to pace yourself and to set the pace and the tone for the reading rather than feeling like you've got to fall all over yourself to make connections immediately because sometimes you can't do that and that's absolutely fine. Darlings, thank you so much for letting me help you uh, with building your confidence. And if you would like an in-depth reading with me, there are many, many options at my online store. I welcome you to go and take a look through the different options that I have. I do have some new things in the online store now that I'm very pleased to offer, including a witchy shift reading. I've got a glow up baby reading. I've got an event planner reading and more as well. So go and have a look at the new section in particular if you've had readings with me before, but you're wanting something new to whet your appetite, then there are things there. Uh, a couple of things you might be interested in that I will link below specifically, my darlings. I do offer a true card slinger reading, which actually assists you with being a better card slinger. So if you read tarot for yourself or others and you want to know how you can get better, come and have a look at the true card slinger option. You may also want to have some card slinger sessions with me. I do actually offer for tarot mentoring. So if you are a card slinger and you use either like, you know, oracle cards, tarot cards or both or whatever it is, and you just want to speak about getting into a deeper relationship with the cards, feeling more confident, giving better readings, all of that stuff, come and work with me. I've been a mentor as a card reader for a long time now. I'm an award-winning card reader. I've been doing this for a while. So do come along and get booked in with me and let me help you with your specific relationship with the cards. Much love, my darlings. And until next time, blessed be. 